last Thanksgiving, I went to Iowa to spend some time with uh, my girlfriend there. And her family um, threw a very nice Thanksgiving. And afterwards, her brother-in-law, his name was Barney, said, uh, hey man, check this out. And he handed me something. And before I even knew what was happening, I had this pistol in my hand. And uh, they had just recently, someone else would probably know, but they had recently changed the gun laws in Iowa to allow for a more Arizona-like situation. <laughs> uh, where people could carry guns. And so he was proud of having this pistol. Now he's a family man, he's got four little kids, a really nice guy. I mean, not that you, you know, if you have a gun, it doesn't make you not a nice person. But I was really shocked that he would be so concerned to carry it. I mean, it's Des Moines, Iowa. You know? <laughs> but he was very proud of it. And I really felt like I had a dead thing in my hand. You know? I, I couldn't do anything. And I knew he wanted me to like, you know, kind of kind of aim it, you know, but you know, I couldn't do anything but just hold it in my flat hand. And the memories of my childhood came back to me then. I grew up in Texas, and my that's a weird thing in and of itself. But my, my dad and my grandfather were very, very tight. They had a really great, very manly relationship that was all based around hunting and fishing. I mean, if these guys couldn't go out and kill an animal, they were depressed. They, they, would, they would come back sad at the sight of no blood. Um, now, they're nice guys, you know, and I don't mean to portray them otherwise, and it wasn't a machismo thing. Um, we ate the game that, that they got. They would deer hunt, rabbit hunt, whatever else, and bring all that stuff home. So I grew up eating a lot of that stuff, and I, I'm, I've got no problem with it. I'm proud of it. I was aware of the cycle of life and death. I just didn't want to be a part of it. But if you can imagine, even from a very young age, there were always guns in the house and hunting knives and every implement of destruction you can imagine. And they held absolutely no appeal to me whatsoever. I mean, I really couldn't be bothered. I sort of like playing with the fishing lures until you get stabbed and then you give up on that, but the gun is nothing. And we didn't even have a gun cabinet in the house. It was just a rack in the bedroom. Um, and then there were a few more guns leaning against things, you know? At any point in my childhood, I could have taken a loaded rifle or shotgun out of the house and gone anywhere I wanted. But I never did. I didn't want to go anywhere, certainly not with a gun. Well, as you can imagine, this didn't exactly make me the most popular son or grandson in the world. <laughs> I work now for public broadcasting, which is great. And my earliest memories of PBS were those Jacques Cousteau specials in the 70s, if you all remember watching those. And I used to sit there and watch them with my dad, and we would both love them to death. Nature documentaries were our bread and butter. It was how we bonded. Yet somehow we were coming away from those shows with two entirely different messages. My dad now has taken up hobbies like taxidermy, so that he can. <laughs> That's funny about that. So that he can better um, preserve his trophies and do it all himself, so he doesn't have to pay. He's also a little cheap, <laughs> which is probably why I packed all of his shotgun shells when I was a kid, four years old or whatever. I didn't know. So then with the thing, pouring, pouring it into the fun, pouring the gunpowder into the funnel and everything. That I could get behind because it was like chemistry, but. He, he does do that now. He takes, he's taken up taxidermy, and he always wants to give me things when I go visit. And he's always like, you know, here's a six-foot rattlesnake that I killed and mounted the skin on a board. Wouldn't you like to take it home with me? Gosh, I don't think I can fit that in the overhead compartment. I'm sorry. If it wasn't for that, I would take it, I swear. And I can just imagine the look at my friends' faces when they come over to my house and see the snake. What, what do you have this in your house for? Anyway. So he just doesn't understand that after all these years, I still like animals better when they're alive. <laughs> he prefers them when they're in the sight of his gun or bow. And, you know, like I said, we grew up eating a lot of game, but he'll kill things for the trophy. Now that I can't get behind. I can't get behind that at all. But when I go home, I'm happy to eat venison and the other stuff he prepares. In fact, my plan, if, uh, remember when we all thought the world was gonna end in 2000, Y2K? And my plan was, all I had to do was get to my dad's house, because he knew how to live off the land. I was actually kind of looking forward to it in a way, because I thought, like, man, it's going to be like hot and cold running venison, you know? But anyway, we survived. So I'm standing there in Iowa holding this gun in my hand, and I'm, I, I really I want to give it back to Barney as soon as I possibly can. I mean, as soon as it's socially possible for me to hand it back to him. And he says, you want to go out and target shoot with us in the backyard? No. No, I don't. Thanks for asking. Why not? Well, 
Because firing guns is noisy and painful, and uh, I don't really see the value in it. Oh, you're one of those anti-gun guys, he says. And I say, well, no, that's not really the case, actually. I'm glad that people like my dad and other people who know how to use weapons and practice, who enjoy it, I don't understand them. I mean, but whatever. I'm glad that there are guns out there. I don't think that the government should be the only person, or the only people with guns, right? And we should be able to protect ourselves. So I don't have a problem with that. But the whole machismo and the, the, um, the sort of one-upping, that's crazy to me. When my dad tried to take me hunting when I was a kid, I was a failure at it, as you might imagine. Uh, for one thing, I didn't want to roll my comic books up and put them in my back pocket, so you know, that was a bit awkward. But I remember carrying a gun. He got me a rifle when I was a kid, as most Texas kids you know, get a rifle when they're about, I don't know, nine or something back then. I think it's a lot younger now. And so it was a 410, which is a nice lady's rifle, nice and compact in a woman's handbag. Um, but that was what I had, and, and I remember, I shot a snake, I shot a raccoon. And that left me feeling pretty bad. I still feel guilty about those things. The raccoon had three legs, so he had been, already been through a lot. He didn't, he didn't look at me. I mean, I don't know, maybe it was a blessing, but... But that was the extent of my hunter. Machismo. When I, when I was walking with the gun, my dad and I were walking, and uh, I was terrified of grasshoppers growing up. They're still probably the insect that freaks me out the most, and I actually like bugs a lot. But uh, this grasshopper landed on my hand, and so naturally, I you know did what anyone would do. I freaked and dropped the gun, which went <laughs> off and shot off in that direction. And I looked at my dad like, oh shit, you know, and he had this look on his face like, yeah, I kind of thought that might happen. <laughs> so luckily, that was the end of my hunt. I never was asked to go. Yeah. I was happy with that. So my relationship with my dad has changed somewhat the last few years because my grandmother passed away. And before, she was the one who always carried messages back and forth between the two of us. And now that she's gone, my dad and I, if we're going to talk, we have to actually talk directly to one another, which is very strange. All along with his fascination and his love for guns and the history that they represent to him is really his most his deepest wish, even more than I'll take that rattlesnake skin home with me next time, his deepest wish is that I'll take his guns. And that when he's gone, I'll have them. And he thinks that that will somehow mean something to me. Um, something other than you know, abject terror. You know, I can't imagine anything more frightening than having a gun. If I, if I had a gun in my house, I would probably move. <laughs> So he brings it up a lot, though, and he says, and he's in good health, so, you know, knock on wood, it's not something I'm going to have to deal with anytime soon, but he does like to talk about it, and he talks about the history of the guns, and he shows it to me, and he, he you know, somehow thinks I'm going to remember the difference between this brown metal, brown and metal object, and this brown and metal object, but I, I don't, they're all the same to me, it's like cars, I don't have any, uh, you know, any vision for that at all, but he worries about it, because to him it's really his legacy. I mean, animals and hunting and killing, that's, that's his thing. And I don't want his trophies, and I don't want his guns. So then I worry, because if anything, it's going to make that old bastard haunt me. It's me selling his guns. <laughs> I think it's funny. But, yeah, he's a sweet guy, but I don't want him haunting me. <laughs> and I also don't want the guns, so I don't know what to do. So I ended up telling Barney about this in Iowa long after I handed him back the pistol. And Birds that with my hand. And uh, he said, well, here's what you do, Mark. He says, if anything happens to your dad, God forbid, if anything happens to your dad, bring the guns to Iowa. Because I'll help you sell them, and you'll get a lot better price for them here, where people are really desperate for guns. Whereas in Arizona, you guys are like throwing them out. You know? <laughs> so I'll help you get the best price for them. And I thought, oh, that's, that's a good plan. I can't believe I'm sitting here, you know, planning, you know, with joy, actually thinking about dollar signs in my head with my, you know, what my dad views as his living legacy. So I still don't know what I'm going to do when I get the guns. But I'll tell you one other story that clearly defines the difference between my father and me. And that's that one, I was in Texas last time, we visited a place called Fossil Rim. And it's like an animal preserve. It's like if anybody remembers Lion Country Safari from way back in the day, it's like that. We drive around and you look at animals, and they have a 
these herds of different exotic antelopes and animals. My dad loved, absolutely loved it. So first of all, I had to convince him that getting his scope out of the back of the car to look better at the animals was probably not a good idea. We probably wouldn't send the right signal to the rangers in the marketplace. But when we, when we left, we, they had one of those guest books that you fill out, you know. And so I signed my name and I said, you know, wonderful conservation, love what you're doing here, the animals were beautiful, great experience. My dad wrote, I looked over his shoulder and I saw the sentence, if you ever decide you need somebody to come out here and cull these herds. <laughs> So that's pretty much the difference between us. <laughs> but I still have no idea what I'm going to do when he dies and I get the guns. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>